My name is Alan, and just for some background, I'm a pilot for the United States Air Force. I fly the F-35A Stealth Joint Strike Fighter. I am in the 466th Fighter Squadron, or Diamondbacks. My 27th mission was covered up by the US government. I saw people sharing their stories here, so I decided to share mine. Here's what actually happened on my 27th mission. In 2019, my squad and I had just arrived at an airbase in Afghanistan. I was in my F-35A Lightning flying over the base waiting for the aircraft control tower to give me the signal to land. I had flown 26 sorties before this so I had a fair amount of experience. I was used to landing at bases so I wasn't worried my squad was already landed or landing. I was supposed to land last. Finally, I got the call to go in for the landing. I deployed my air brake and decreased airspeed while lining up for the landing strip. After I dropped below 250 miles per hour, I deployed my landing gear at 450 feet and decreased altitude and landed safely and began making my way to my jet's small hangar toward the front of the airstrip. My squad had all the hangars to my right. I had the first hangar. This means if a situation occurs to me and my squad, we would be the first in the sky. The next three hangars next to ours were an F-16 squad. I backed my F-35 into the hangar with help of the ground crew. I got out of my F-35 and was greeted by a couple of officers who showed me my way to the barracks. The squad who was already following the officers followed me and when we arrived, we all laid down from exhaustion. Finally, we're here, said Johnson. Yeah, that nine-hour flight stunk. The rest of the squad was out, or texting their families that they had made it. All right, everyone, get some rest. Y'all are gonna need it. We never know when we get called out to flight again. The part of the squad that was awake said in total disorder. All right, sir. That night, my squad and I got a good night's rest. Basically, we're there for three days doing nothing but our occasional PT. On the third night, I was fast asleep. When the alarms in our barracks started going off, I immediately jumped out of bed and began putting on my flight suit. The rest of my squad was doing the same. I looked at Johnson, Garrett, and Josh, and they were all getting ready to move. I put on my vest and I strapped it on. Let's go, boys. I screamed. They all said, Yes, sir. We all began running towards our jets. The crewmen on the ground had them all ready to go. I got in and I fired up the engine, rolled the jet down the strip to take off position. I put on the highly advanced helmet and the ground crew gave the green to go. I took off down the runway, followed by my squad. I decreased speed and I let them catch up. Unknown flyers at northwest of the base. All fighters moved to intercept. Command said over the radio, This is Diamondback 1 moving to intercept. Copy Diamondback 1. This is Diamondback 1 weapons check. Diamondback 2 check. Diamondback 3 check. Diamondback 4 check. Copy that. All units form up targets are about 300 miles out. Does the command know anything what we're facing? Said Garrett. No clue at Garrett, but we'll be there in about 45 minutes. I said. Let's go, fellas. We got some actual combat. Said Johnson in a very excited voice. Ah, come on, Johnson. Don't get too excited. We still got no clue what we're facing. I said. Oh, don't worry about it, Alan. It's probably just some old MiG-21 that the Russians left behind, said Josh. Hey, you never know, man, I said. I looked at my radar and the object looked like it wasn't closing in. Everybody pushed speed up to 1,500 miles per hour, over. I looked behind me and watched my F-35 break the sound barrier as I sped up. I looked back at the radar and we were about 
215 miles away. Our missiles were long-range air-to-air missiles, which we could fire from about 100 miles away. It was a dark night, around zero visibility without night vision, so I had to rely on my high-tech flight helmet. We were about 100 miles away. I tapped my fire system, and the internal compartments beneath the plane opened, and I fired an AIM-54 Phoenix forwards. The missiles had its own radar system, so I was hoping it could find the radar signature of this unknown aircraft. I watched the missile tear through the skies until I lost vision. I looked around for my squad to see them in a tight formation with me. I was shocked that Johnson hadn't messed it up like he always did. I had this feeling that the missile I had sent had missed. And we were about 30 miles out, about two minutes away. I could see this tiny light in the sky, up ahead when suddenly radar and comms came back on. Diamondback one to all, how copy? What is that? said Garrett. Dude, I, I don't know, said Johnson. All units do not engage. It's just sitting there like something is holding it by a string. I was shocked by what I saw. It didn't look like any aircraft I had ever seen. It was a giant aircraft shaped like a sphere. It had lights all over it. And it was just hovering there like it was volatile. My computer did not recognize what I was looking at. There was what looked to be a highly futuristic weapon on the top, but it was not firing. When suddenly, it jerked over towards the north. I looked down by my radar to see more signatures, but they were F-16s, the second sortie. I tried to communicate with them. When suddenly, I see this alien sphere shoot five lasers, and I see all three F-16s burst into flames. And watch as the jets fall down and the pilots eject, thankfully. The other two lasers hit Josh and Johnson, but the laser just seemed to deflect off. Like the design of their aircraft had prevented them from bursting into flames. What the heck? screamed Josh. All units engage. My squad launched their missiles at the craft, and I watched them impact it, causing damage. I looked over at Johnson's aircraft to realize that he had sustained damage to his right wing. Johnson had also received damage. The F-35 was a really fragile jet, so I told them both to head back to base. Copy that, sir. Take whatever this is down. We've already shot all our missiles, said Johnson. It's damaged. Looks like there's an opening on the south side. Alan and Garrett's move in, and you might take it down, said Josh. I came around to the south side of the aircraft and pulled a 9G turn and came directly towards the opening. I could clearly see a bright blue light in the shaft. I used my tracking computers to lock onto the light. I opened my weapon bay doors and fired four AIM-9 sidewinders into the light. The entire south side of the ship blew off. I watched as the bright blue light pierced through the smoke and flames. A direct hit. As I was flying by, I got a good look inside the aircraft. Through the flames, I saw large creatures dead all over the place. And then I saw something disturbing that I will never forget. Multiple human bodies in a giant pile close to the center. They looked in pieces and eaten. I nearly puked. I flew by and began another turn when suddenly, I looked up and saw Garrett's F-35 launch all eight missiles, and I watched them impact the craft and explode. The large craft began falling rapidly out of the sky. Command, this is Diamondback 1. UFO is down in grid 23. Sector 4, over Copy that, Diamondback Squadron. Stay over the crash site until ground troops arrive. Copy. What was that? 
Garrett said nervously. I don't know, but I know we're probably lucky to be alive. Jesus, I saw humans in the craft along with unknowns. You saw humans, said Garrett. Yeah, and they were all disfigured, like they were eaten. What the heck? Garrett and I both go back into a duo formation. I look over at Garrett's jet and saw his left wing had a small hole in it. Hey, your wing looks to be damaged. Garrett, make sure to get back to base quickly. Copy that, sir. You sure you'll be able to keep it covered? Yeah, I got it. Copy that. And good luck, Alan. I watched as Garrett pulled off into the distance. I lowered my altitude to around 10,000 feet to try and get a visual on the crash site. Luckily, I saw the smoke and flames. Through the infrared cameras on the F-35s below, I can see through these cameras thanks to my helmet. While I was looking, I watched as the sphere burned in the ground. Command, this is one. I have visual on the crash site. As I was looking down, I saw movement and heat signatures on the ground. It looked like as if the creatures or aliens were limping out and trying to escape. This is Diamondback 1. I got movement down by the wreckage. Copy that one. Engage all moving tangos. I angled my F-35 into a dive as I began diving on the creatures. I began to line my sight up on the gray figures. My hand hovered over the trigger as I hit 6,000 feet, soon 5,000. I opened fire and watched my 30mm bullets tear through the tall figures in the ground. They were all about 8 feet tall. Skinny bodies, lanky arms, and extremely long necks. I watched as they exploded into pieces. I pulled out of my dive and the G's nearly made me puke. Since I was already nauseous from seeing these things in general. This is Diamondback 1. Target to Kia. Copy that. Helix 2-3 is inbound and hot to investigate. Return to base. Copy that. Returning to base. Before I returned to base, I flew lower to the ground to get a better look at what I had just done. As I hit about 1500 feet. I looked down and saw the pile of humans scattered everywhere, probably the same one that I saw earlier. At this sight, my stomach couldn't handle it anymore. I took off my oxygen mask and I puked into a bag. I saw these 12 foot creatures dead everywhere. I looked away and pulled up beginning to return to base. About 15 minutes later, I was landing back at base. As soon as I landed and exited the plane, I saw six guys in full black suits with the commander of the base walk up to me and asked me to come with them. I walked with them to the commander's office and as we entered, I saw my team sitting there. The commander and the six guys in black sat down and I followed. Sign these disclosure agreements, please. One of the guys in black said, also, in your after action, report none of what you saw happened. You need to make a story about running into a fighter squad and they shot down three F-16s and damaged two F-35s. I looked at the commander. Yes, sir, I said. And so did my squad. And what happens if we don't do this? Asked Johnson. Well, let's just say that you will agree. One of the guys in black said. I watched as Johnson, as nervous as he was, signed the contract. Alright, you're all good to go. Not a word to anyone. The commander said in a very serious voice. My squad and I returned to our barracks and there was a dead silence for a good 30 minutes. Guys, what just happened? Josh said in a very nervous voice. I don't know. I think we just ran into something that the government does not want getting out. Who are those guys in black? Asked Garrett. Probably a three letters, said Johnson nervously. Guys, let's just get some rest. Whatever those things were, talking about them will harm us better than help us. 
Uh, good night, everyone. After this, I never had uh, another experience like this. My squad had kept our mouths shut until now. I don't know what those things were or where they came from, but all I know is that they were not from here. There are things, uh, life forms, that our government does not want us to know about. I don't know what will happen to me from here, but thankfully our missiles were able to take down whatever that was. To this day, I have no clue who those guys in black were and whom they worked for. I also have no clue what happened to that ship and those creatures that I had mowed down.